Hey everyone, so the last update uh, was a little while ago on the van. The weather has been kind of crappy, cold and rainy, so we took a break. Uh, the last thing that we did was put on the sound deadening insulation in the walls. While it was cold and rainy, uh, we took some time and worked on laying out the floor. We went to the hardware store, picked up some furring strips. I'll show you what it all looks like. So we went with the two by one pine furring strips. These were six dollars a piece lumber is kind of expensive right now they didn't come white like this we painted them with mold and mildew resistant paint because uh, the subfloor might get some condensation we're hoping not after we put the proper insulation in but just in case we coated everything with mold and mildew resistant paint and the layout of this is kind of a it's tricky because for everybody it's going to be a little different depending on what kind of insulation you're putting in. We are putting in three quarters of an inch thick plywood so I didn't put the furring strips too close together given how thick the plywood is going to be so it's going to have a lot of natural support but I wanted to space them out to provide some room for the wool insulation which is going in after everything's in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually glue these on to the floor of the van. Some people screw them on. I really don't want to make any more holes in the van floor to prevent any kind of rust. Um, so we're going to use a flexible adhesive and attach everything and then go from there and start insulating. So I did some research on what kind of adhesive to use and a lot of people use liquid nails. I would advise against that because a lot of the adhesives you can find at Home Depot and just generic hardware stores, um, they will crack and they will detach and you definitely don't want that to happen. So I went with a highly recommended Sikaflex. The beautiful thing about this is this actually, it bonds really well to any kind of surfaces and um, it's resistant to aging and it's actually, it's in the name, it is flexible. So as you're driving, as the van flexes, as the metal flexes, this will not crack or detach from the floor. So super important. And we're gonna give this a try. I got three of these, we'll see if it's enough. So before you start any kind of adhesive work, I would definitely recommend making sure that the area where you're gonna be gluing is completely clean. And this will ensure that everything bonds as well as it can. Now I have previously painted this, so it's fairly clean, but just another pass. And now what I will do is I will apply a thin layer of adhesive You don't want to apply too much because if you apply too much it's just going to squeeze out on the sides and cause kind of a giant mess. So I have my first strip on and you definitely need something heavy to put on top of this. I'm just going to use my battery bank here. So first I'll step on this with my full weight to really push it down. Thank you. 
So according to the instructions in the back, the full curing time is about seven days. So that doesn't mean you have to keep the weight on it for seven days, but I would definitely recommend keeping the weight for about an hour and then um, definitely avoiding any kind of additional work for about a week. So you wanna apply just enough. So the first thing you wanna do is press down as hard as you can. Using your hand might not be enough. So what I found very effective is to just carefully step and put all your weight and then move back a little bit. And then move back. Now you gotta watch out because you can see it's starting to slide. So you wanna keep it in place as you're doing this. All right, so everything is complete. I have the last set of furring strips near the door over here, just drying for the side here. I had to actually get a thinner piece than the two by one because um, this edge is slightly raised. So to compensate for that, I had to get a thinner piece and then also pad it with some kill mat over here. This is not gonna be load bearing, so it doesn't really matter too much as long as it's flush with the rest of them. Um, and I had to cut out some of the spots where I fixed the holes. I had to cut out holes like this in order to make sure that the pieces of wood are flush with the floor. So another update, we haven't really done a big update in a little while. So uh, we have completed all of the furring strips. They are all successfully glued on and it's drying very nicely. Uh, we have also, haven't really shared this step by step because it's pretty straightforward, but we have cut the kill mat to size and filled in all of the gaps. And we're doing something a little bit different. Um, do you want to talk about these uh, strips here? Yeah, so these are neoprene strips, which I just finished laying down. And the reason why you do that, and they're really simple, it's just adhesive. It, it's like a sticker, basically. You just throw it right on. The reason why they're so important is because when you have your plywood going on top of your furring strips, uh, wood on wood is going to rub and squeak. Um, and this is neoprene, so it's actually going to absorb that squeaking noise right into there. So that way you don't get any kind of squeaking floors. So we're gonna do the same with our wall furring strips and our ceiling as well, just because you're gonna be driving a vehicle, which means it will inevitably squeak. And what are you doing now? And right now, I have a little diagram of the van right here, and I am taking measurements between, so the top is the width, the bottom is the length, so it's two and three quarter by 57 and a half for the first one between the wall and the first furring strip, and we're going to cut those um, pieces of Havelock wool to fit perfectly right in there. Insulation, installation. <laughs> we're going to get woolly. <laughs> So this is our Havelock wool insulation. These sheets, each one of them is actually two inches. So if you're only going for one inch of insulation, you can take it right down the middle and then kind of split it and that'll give you an inch. So the first thing we will do is cut one piece of this and see how it fits between our furring strips on the floor. And then if that works out okay, we will cut more and get the whole floor covered up. It's not half. Yeah, it kind of rips. So you got to be careful. It's not, it is just wool and it's loose. So you want to make sure you're not ripping it too much. Okay, so you I did. Think that's about an inch. So you have to be very meticulous and careful about this. I'm about anything but meticulous and careful as a person, so this is a challenge. Yeah, so you definitely don't want to just 
take these bats and just rip them in half because they will actually rip and then they're not going to be very useful. So you want to kind of separate them carefully. It's going to be a slow process. We can I already gathered that. We should Yay! The wool has been spread. <laughs> so let's take this piece. I think um, the, the top piece is always going to be a little neater than the bottom, so the bottom piece we can use for like stuffing. Yep, yep. So we'll definitely, some of this leftover stuff, we'll use this to stuff it into the walls and other places where it doesn't need to be neat. Stuff, stuff the wool. <laughs> Stuff the wool into the hole. All right, so let's go ahead and now cut this to size. So the first piece is in. We have stuffed the wool into the hole. <laughs> Not really a hole, but yeah. I think this is going to work out pretty well. So I was worried that with the three quarters of an inch furring strips, it would be too little space for the one inch wool. But now that it's compressed, this is actually perfectly level. So the plywood will sit beautifully on top of all of this. Yeah, I'm excited. 